you may be seated. One of the main famous things that many people say that there is a reason for everything. There's a reason why God spares us just one more time. There's a reason why situations happen just sometimes. There's reasons why we have hurts and hardships in life. There's reasons why we cry and have circumstances in life. And oftentimes, after every reason, you understand that there's a purpose. Now, understand that this reason might not always feel good. This reason might not always look good. But tell somebody there is a reason. The truth of the matter is we would not appreciate sometimes our affliction or the things that we have if it wasn't for this reason. If it wasn't for being sick, we would not know the reason that we would need a doctor in the hill. If, if, if it wasn't for uh, the reason of a burden, we wouldn't know who is our burden bearer. If, if, if it wasn't for some situations, you wouldn't know who was able to have a solution for every situation. Tell somebody there he is a reason. And in spite of every reason, there is a lesson. Tell somebody there is a lesson. There's some things that you can learn beside, behind every reason. Without certain reasons, you wouldn't learn some lessons. You wouldn't learn how to love God like you do. You, without some lessons, you wouldn't learn how to pray like you do. Without some lessons in life, you wouldn't learn how to worship like you do. Without some lessons in life, you wouldn't learn how to trust in God like you do. Without some lessons in life, you wouldn't learn how to praise God anyhow in life. Tell somebody, there is a reason. We find that the writer of our passage this today is none other than Luke. Yeah. Now the strange thing about Luke and his writing, Luke is the only gospel writer who writes um, as, as, as an investigator because he was not an eyewitness. Matthew, Mark, and John were able to see Jesus and all that he did, but Luke had to ask around and go do some investigating to hear exactly about this man named Jesus. It's amazing because of the fact that we haven't always known Jesus the way we know him. We have to do some investigating ourselves to see what he would do in times like this. You wouldn't have known that he would be a way maybe if you would have never asked nobody. You wouldn't have known that he would open the door and you never would have asked nobody. But thanks be unto God that somebody else found out who he was and now we have a, a privilege in knowing who he is as well. This man, this man, Luke, the physician, the great physician, ironically, he's dealing with a physical ailment right now. And, and, but before he gets to the physical ailment in chapter, in verse 13, I want to look at how we got to verse 13. Number one, he opens up this chapter in chapter 17, talking about, talking about that we would be tempted to sin. Care who you are, what you are, how long you've been inside church. There are going to be times when you will be tempted to sin. Some folks are going to push your buttons. Some folks are going to get on your last nerve. Some folks are just going to blow out your mind, make you pull your hair. And he says, that what you need to understand is, don't be expected. Don't, don't, don't get caught off guard. Don't get surprised when folks tempt you. But no, no matter how hard you try to hold it together, folks won't tempt you. No matter how hard you try to do good and ignore something, folks won't get on your last nerve. Yeah, yeah. And he says, but in the response, they have to repent and you got to forgive them. And it does not matter. Watch this. You can't wait to forgive people whether they repent or not. But you just got to forgive them anyway. He says, in order to receive forgiveness, you have to forgive the dog on the And the question is, how many times do you forgive? He says, as often as you need. Because as often as you sin, God still forgives you. He has a habit of looking beyond your many folks and seeing every one of your needs. And sometimes what I like about it, even though sometimes I forget to ask for forgiveness, he still forgives me anyway. He says in verse 1 through 4, he says, you will be tempted. But in verse 5 through 6, he says, no matter the tempt 
Peter. No, no matter in the other gospels, he says, well, what's going to happen is don't become the offender. Uh, Even though you will be offended, you have to be careful not to become the offender. Because I realize and I recognize all that you've done for me. Is there anybody here that goes around looking back over your life and seeing what he's done for you? Is there anybody here that don't feel like giving God credit? Oh, <laughs> 